Uh, good evening, everyone. So I hope you had a nice lighthearted session with a small discussion and the civil event. You know, hope you got to you know brush up on your artistic skills. So now we'll uh, go back to the student speakers. So next we have Hemashri Yogesha. She's a student from BNM Institute of Technology. So you know we all listen to music and watch dance performances. Now Hemashri will talk to us about the neuroscience that goes behind these. Over to you, Amish. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so today I'll be talking about the neuroscience of music and dance. I'm pretty sure most of you would have been involved in some sort of extracurricular activity while growing up. Um, music, dance, theater, sports, art. Um, so I'm also pretty sure by the time you come to the end of high school, and probably start your college, there is this uh, mentality that forces parents to, you know, ask you to cut down your extracurriculars to a bare minimum. So that actually negatively impacts your uh, academics or other aspects of your life. So that's all because of uh, your, uh, and that's all because of how your brain is interlinked. Um, with music and neuroscience. So right now, yeah, I just can't share my screen. Give me a minute. Is my screen visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay. Um, and if there are any questions, uh, please don't mind stopping me and asking me. Um, you know, you can actually raise your hands or, um, yeah, just put them in the chat box. Okay, so today's agenda is a quick introduction to neuroscience. And then I'll be talking about uh, the particular parts of the brain which are affected by music and dance. Then we'll move on to why we need to study the neuroscience of music and dance. So where um, is this applied? And then we can have a question and answer session. So, neuroscience is the study of the nervous system. The brain, the spinal cords, the nerves. Um, as most of you would have been aware, the brain and the nervous system together is what controls every single part of your body. So when we talk about neuroscience, we can actually find answers to various problems at the root level. So suppose a person has a stroke and he's, able, he's unable to move his legs properly. So that, is actually because of some problem in the brain. So when we tap into neuroscience, we're actually finding problems. We're finding answers to problems at the root level. We can also understand human behavior because what we do, why we do, that's all because of neuroscience. And we get to solve mental health, health issues like depression, anxiety, uh, amnesia, Parkinson's, schizophrenia, you name it. All those can be solved because of neuroscience. And it's not just the biological aspect of neuroscience, but there are different branches of neuroscience, like behavioral neuroscience, how a person acts, why he acts like that. Cellular neuroscience, so when we go deep into one cell, the neuron, and how it's structured, how it works. Cognitive, clinical, computational. So computational neuroscience is where we include uh, AI, so how neuroscience um, can be used to uh, model a human brain in um, artificially and make that brain do something. And molecular neuroscience and social neuroscience. So coming to the effect of music and dance on the brain, we've always known knew that uh, music and dance affected the brain in many positive ways. So Suppose there's a kid and it's crying and it wants to sleep. You've heard mothers singing them a lullaby. So right from a very young age, human brains are fine-tuned to um, music and they react positively. Even though we knew that from a very long time, we haven't actually studied the effect of music or dance on the brain until the late 1990s. So when we did study about the neuroscience of music and dance, we found out that there are some parts of the brain which react more positively than the others. So there are some brains, there's some parts of the brain just fire up at the sound of music or, you know, there are lots of neural activities when you dance. 
So practicing or listening to music or dancing leads to benefits like neuroplasticity, a very big word, but it's very simple meaning. So it's just that your brain can keep changing. So your brain is not stagnant. It keeps adapting. There are new connections being formed all the time. Every time you learn something new, every time you hear a new song, every time you dance something new, there are new connections. And your brain is actually becoming um, more complex, more connectivity is being formed. And that's how you're developing your brain towards a better one. And then emotional regulation, etc. So this is an MRI scan of the brain at rest and with its reaction to music. So at rest, you'll see that there are more number of neutral colors, blue, green. So that's that just shows that the brain, there isn't much of neural activity going on in the brain at that point. But when you're listening to music, there are many parts of the brain which just fire up. That's what I talked to you about. So there is a lot of activity. That's why you have the heat signals, red, orange, and yellow. And this is a, yeah. this is a comparison between the brains of dancers and non-dancers. You can see that certain regions, like the auditory region and the music visualization task region, motor localizer task region. So those regions are more developed than dancers. And that's why they're able to perform other tasks better than non-dancers. So I'll just go very briefly into the different parts of the brain which uh, are active when uh, a person is singing or dancing. So your frontal lobe, which is associated with thinking, decision-making and planning. So when you dance or you sing, you plan. So you say, okay, at this beat, I'm gonna sing this note. Or at, when this music comes up, I'm gonna be moving here on stage, I'm gonna move front, I'm gonna move back. That's all because of the frontal lobe. So when you think and you decide and you plan, that's when the frontal lobe comes into picture. So then the temporal lobe, you're hearing, it's associated with your auditory functions. The Broca's area is associated with the speech production and communication. Hippocampus, which is associated with producing and retrieving memory. So when we learn something new, it's usually in our short term memory, but when you keep on practicing, you push it down towards the long term. And it just, when it comes to dance, it just becomes muscle memory. Okay, so that's how you fine tune your memory to, um, you know, you don't even have to think before you dance or sing, you just do it on spot. That's how it works. Um, other parts are amygdala, which are associated with processing and triggering emotions. So when you suddenly hear a piece of music and then you get goosebumps or, you know, there are chills down your spines, that's all because of the amygdala. You, you feel emotionally connected to the, the music. The hypothalamus, obviously, it's the master gland, links the endocrine and the nervous system. Uh, the corpus callosum is something that enables the communication between two hemispheres. So your brain is divided into your right and the left hemispheres. So if you want those two hemispheres to communicate with each other, you have something called as the corpus callosum. And by doing music or dance or any creative activity, you're actually helping, helping the corpus callosum to improve you're uh, improving the communication between the two hemispheres. The putamen processes rhythm and regulates body movement and coordination. So one interesting fact is uh, when you have Parkinson's patients, um, they have lost their rhythm. So even when you're walking, there is some sort of rhythm to your walk, right? So when you're moving, there's some sort of rhythm to your moving. But Parkinson's patients have very stiff, they don't swing their arms while walking. That's all rhythm. That's all part of rhythm. So when we are trying to help Parkinson's patients out, this is the part of the brain we're actually interested in um, to help them improve. So then vernix area associated with comprehending written and spoken languages. Occipital lobe, which is associated with visual functioning and uh, processing what we see. So when we are dancers, we observe what they're doing and then we put into put, put that into our place. And when we're singers, we read the lyrics, read the notations before singing. 
So that's how it works. The cerebellum, like I said, that's the part where the muscle memory gets stored. And the nucleus accumbens, you know, this feeling of satisfaction that you get after performing or after just singing, that's because of the reward center of the brain. It releases happy hormones like dopamine. So that just makes you uh, feel contented at the end of listening to a song. So these are the parts of the brain which are associated with music and dance. There are actually many other parts of the brain which um, are associated uh, with music and dance. But the reason I spoke about these parts is because these are the parts that are used to help people through therapy. So that is exactly why we need to study the neuroscience of music and dance. So the applications of studying the neuroscience of music and dance is therapy. So what we do is since we know that music and dance can affect so many areas of the brain, we're gonna take the music, break it down into little bits, which can be used for specific parts of the brain. And we make the person suffering from that cognitive disease to listen to that music or perform that bit of dance. And you're directly um, solving that bit of a problem that's there in the brain. So to the right, actually there are, this is the, the top is uh, dance therapy in motion and the bottom picture is music therapy in session. So like I said, there are different parts. So if you want to work with Alzheimer's patients, you want to tap into the hippocampus, which is the memory, uh, which is where the memory of the brain is stored. So if you want to tap into the hippocampus, you try to make the patient listen to songs that he may have heard in his childhood or at an uh, earlier stage. And that's how you form the connection there. And schizophrenia or uh, depression and anxiety. How many of you listen to music when you're sad? I, I don't know, I, I literally can't see anybody, but I think you can raise your hand or something. Or you can speak up if there's a favorite song you listen to when you're sad or you're feeling down. So those are all the applications of neuroscience of music and dance. So all said and done, why is it actually important for us? Hey, we're students, um, why do we need to study the neuroscience of music and dance? We're not gonna go into therapy, but since I already told you, there are many different parts of the brain, so which are um, uh, affected by music and dance. The frontal lobe is associated with decision-making ability. So when you are improving the frontal lobe, you're actually improving your decision-making ability. So the first thing why, the first important um, part of learning about the neuroscience of music and dance is the better decision-making ability. Memory enhancement, hippocampus. Increase emotional quotient, that's because of the amygdala. Prevention or delay of neurodegenerative disease. So the more connections you make in the brain, the more you keep it active, the lesser chance of um, having a disease later on, a neurodegenerative disease later on. It also helps um, improving uh, social interaction and obviously confidence and self-esteem by practicing the um, creative arts. So this is why we as students, uh, we need to know how music and dance are gonna help us be better human beings on an overall scale. And I'm pretty sure most of us are connected to music and dance, no matter what we do in our daily lives. Um, so thank you. Um, I would like to keep this open for questions or discussions because uh, I'm just sharing whatever I know. And if there's anything you want to add on or is there, if there is anything you want to share, I am quite open to it. No questions? Hey guys, you can unmute or just... Oh. Uh, Pupit is asking, is it any kind of music or is it a particular specific music that has, you know, benefits for the neural system? Okay. So thanks to that question. It's actually a very interesting question. So... 
you can work with any kind of music for therapy um this wasn't like we are still working on it in india there is a lot of research being done in nimhans they have a music cognition lab um but you can work with any kind of music usually the type of music selected is something that has some sort of a relationship with the person who is undergoing therapy suppose i listen to classical music most of the time and if i want to have a music therapy for some sort of uh, neural disease then the therapy would be done with something that has some sort of connect to me it is believed that there is a better chance of recovery if the person you know has some sort of emotional connect to that music but yeah you can use jazz you can use pop music you can use classical no um, constraints on that thanks for that question and actually you can even use just um, a single um, hum at a particular frequency there are different frequencies um, like they they call they call alpha beta and gamma rays a uh, gamma waves sorry so and they have particular frequencies it doesn't even have to be many different notes it's just one frequency played over and over again and it is supposed to help different parts of your brain focus or concentrate or relax so on so thanks for that question any other questions what's the current research in this field okay um so right now uh, i'll just share what i know maybe like there may be many other things going on so using it as therapy we would want to break down music into components that can be used for specific therapies so if i want to work with a patient who has alzheimers i don't really want i don't really want to bother about all the other part we just want to focus on the hippocampus so relating a particular or part of the brain to a particular part of music or dance is the current research in this field there are also many other things going on um, people who have heard classical music or listen to classical music know that there are different ragas there are different ragas so each raga is supposed to make you feel a particular emotion so they are working with which raga gives you which emotion and how can you use that to treat a particular disease so that kind of things are going on and they are also working on how you suppose they take one particular disease and work on all the different parts of the brain that you need to um cure in order to cure the entire disease so actually when we talk about therapy we don't talk about curing it's only about lessening the uh disease yes now in relation to bupesh's question hmm. yeah let me just go ahead so i've heard like it's just said people who like listen to classical music um they can increase their iq and then pregnant women listen to mozart and all with the hope that they'll give birth to like smart kids is there any truth behind that no um it's not just mozart it's not just classical music it's any kind of music actually because that is true it's a very wide myth and most people believe that listening to one particular kind of song makes you smarter it's nothing like that um it's more of how you connect with the song if i if let's say i play mozart for 10 hours and i don't feel anything for the song it's actually pretty useless for me so yeah some people prefer jazz it also depends on generations like my grandmother may be listening to uh, classical devarnamas and all that but maybe i prefer something else and yeah it's personal preference actually okay i see there's another question can music be considered a precaution or a treatment um it's both actually <laughs> if you listen to music on a daily basis you're actually that's actually a precaution um i mean you're not directly aiming at okay i'm going to listen to music for an hour every day so that i'll not fall ill it's not like that but it's just an added benefit you're feeling happy but you're going to 
you know, um, have a lesser probability of getting a neurodegenerative disease later on. That's how. So music is both a precaution and a treatment. So that's how it works. Okay, any other questions or discussions? Anything you want to share? Like any part of your life where music or dance has affected you in a positive way or something? Um, I want to share something. So uh, I think I had read a paper or something uh, based on uh, this. It's the same topic on uh, how music can, how music is related to neuroscience. And um, I had not read more about it, but it's, I think it's something that we know, but we don't realize. So we just know that, oh, a walk will make me feel better. Uh, uh, music, uh, you know, listening to song can make me feel better. So we just do it, but we don't realize it that, oh, this is why it's happening to me. So uh, when I, uh, I had a friend um, who gradually went into depression and uh, during that time, um, I, I was like a student uh, counselor in my uh, co college. So they had something like a teacher counsel counselor and a student counselor. So a student counselor is not like, it's not like a post or something, but it's just that uh, when, the, when somebody comes to the teacher counselor and when they are not able to relate to it, then they just recommend them to go and talk to a student counselor so that uh, there is no age gap. There is no uh, age difference that uh, the patient is talking about. So there was this girl who came up to me and spoke to me and uh, she was like, uh, okay, uh, I was like, okay, I think she is leading into depression. Now I'm not an expert or anything. So I'll have to tell the teacher what is happening. So I spoke to the teacher and the counselor was really good, the really good. And uh, it went on, I think she got, yeah, it uh, went on and uh, gradually it, the, the treatment that the teacher suggested for her was music. And uh, the counselor was like, the counselor also worked on something like uh, what is visually pleasing to the patients. So uh, she had a bulletin bo board right behi behind her uh, cabin. And uh, there she used to post certain, uh, you know, small quotes like uh, you deserve better or uh, something like that. Uh, and she used to post like so many things and some, some are like small, small images. And uh, all of this made her realize that it, it has a positive impact on the students who came up for help. And uh, this friend of mine, uh, she obviously music helped a lot. She was into music. After she were, after we felt like she was getting into depression, my teacher suggested that she starts learning an instrument because that's how much she was into music. And um, I don't want to mention her name or anything, but uh, she's currently a guitarist. She has an Instagram channel and uh, she, she sings so well, she plays so well, and she finds her peace in music currently. So that was the story I wanted to share. That's actually one of the very real uh, explanations of how music affects you on a large scale. Um, sorry, I'm not able to turn on my video. I think there's some issue. It's okay, it's okay. So, yeah. yeah, that's true. Um, I think people usually resort to music as the last option, but you know, the minute you start doing it, it really, Speed is the way in which the cure is happening. So, <laughs> okay, like so someone said, he's really inspired. <laughs> okay, as long as at least there's one of you who feels motivated to do music and dance from today, I feel I've done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> you have, you have. In fact, you have. You have. Thanks. <laughs> Any other okay. questions, right? Question? I have one more. Um, you mentioned that people who, you know, dance on a regular basis, they also perform other tasks better. So, like, what kind of other tasks? Um, anything that is related to uh, coordination between the limbs. So, uh, if you, uh, I don't know, there was... 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So anything that's related to coordination between the limbs is uh, performed better by dancers. So uh, I don't know, there was this challenge um, where you had to uh, do, you had to work with your uh, two hands and uh, one hand goes in one rhythm and the other hand goes in another rhythm. And people who dance or listen to music uh, perform that better because um, the brain can work differently using both the hemispheres of the brain. So the right and the left can coordinate and do different things at the same time. So those are uh, kind of tasks. It just shows a highly developed motor cortex and your uh, cerebral. So yeah, any other questions, any other uh, instances you want to share or? Uh, like, you know, many of us, like for me, I, I mean, I don't prefer listening to music, but like when I'm studying or something, I like to listen to like nature sounds, you know, sort of like, you know, like rain sounds or something like that. Like, how does it, is there like a stand, what to say? Is there like a scientific evidence or something that says that it improves your studying session or anything like that? Or like, how does it work? Or like, why do people prefer studying, uh, you know, with these sounds? Okay. Um, it's actually not that everybody prefers studying because the, uh, there are a few people who get distracted with the listen to sound too. They prefer absolute oh, yes. silence. Yes. Uh, but yeah, those of us who like to listen to music while studying, I think um, you just uh, you can just shut down the world if you know what I say. Yeah, you just I pretend that nothing is music and you book yourself and everything else is non-existent. And that's how you, you know, create this kind of bubble where you can work safely without uh, being interrupted. So I think that's how it works. You're shutting yeah. down the other, the entire world. No, like the other extra noises that happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because when you're studying, the only sense that is open to distraction is your ears. Because uh, your mm -hmm. eyes are focused. Um, so when you can just cancel out that distraction from your ear, I think you can create that focused environment. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. Any other questions or suggestions or anything you want to share? Okay, any any dancers or singers here who you know have a personal story to share of how it helped them you know overcome something or anybody else who's into theater or even sports actually anything that non theater was I was hoping you didn't say that. <laughs> So all of the things that you mentioned, I'm into it, <laughs> except for sports. I'm not into sports. Great. Then uh, I have a partner. Uh, I do actually relate to it a lot because uh, um, I even have a, uh, so I live in a PG right now. So when you live in PG, you will definitely come across uh, some people who are probably going to sing in 11 o'clock in the night with their guitar and uh, you'll be like please no not now <laughs> then uh, I spoke I genuinely came across such a person and I went and knocked at her door and be like please not now <laughs> and I want to sleep <laughs> and uh, she uh, she's a guitarist she plays really really well I have even had jamming sessions with her uh, and then that night she shared that she was very frustrated Mm, she was frustrated with work probably 
and uh, she just wanted to take it off and i do relate with that feeling that whenever you sing loudly you sing your lungs out it's very relaxing uh, also when it comes to theater i am into street theater so street theater you know that you have a lot of energy you have to run from this end to that end so most of the times it's like to be honest acting in uh, me has come in uh, because i kind of relate things to a script uh, i relate a script to my personal life so if it is something about pain then i imagine a pain that's happened to me something that's given me pain in my past and it just that emotion just comes in it just rushes in so that's how acting has been very uh, good with me and uh, uh, street theater also there's like there's one voice exercise that we do uh, i think we've even noticed this in many movies uh life in a metro life in a metro i clearly remember uh, this is a movie life in a metro where uh, there's a movie scene where the girl is frustrated she is having it in her she's not sharing it with anybody so um, her guy friend suggests her to go to the terrace and just shout and just shout her just shout her lungs out so uh, that's something that we do in street theater also but that's a voice exercise uh but some of us use it to our advantage as a frustration reliever it's it's i think it's how you uh, correlate the emotional aspect to your physical aspect so you just say the the way you would throw a burden out of your head that's how you're throwing your voice out of your throat and that's why you know it is said that if you straighten out the physical aspects in your life the mental aspects are also straight, straightened out and that's how it works probably yeah correct okay. so himashi what made you choose this topic um thank you for asking actually um so i when i was doing my 12th uh, last year uh, so we were supposed to uh, you know do projects for our biology all that i've been into neuroscience since my 8th and 9th grades so you know obsessively following what what just what's happening what's next um but for my 12th grade we were supposed to do projects and i decided i'm going to do something related to me not completely unrelated um i'm a dancer and a musician um i've been dancing since 10 years now singing since 15 so i kind of connect to it and i have this habit of interconnecting everything i learn you know interdisciplinary studies make me happy because everything is something i love um so when i started off i started looking up for the music and neuroscience and dance and found out there is actually a lot of things done here um i was very fortunate to have gotten connected to dr dr shantala hegde from nimhans she heads the music cognition lab so she kind of guided me through the whole process while i was doing that project and yeah as you know i i try to keep up with this and hopefully one day i'll be part of the research too because i really want to do it you know helping people through music and dance just it's a whole new level of awesomeness really nice you know cool okay um if there are no further questions and we'll move ahead thank you so much himishri it was a really nice thank you, thank you so much himishri thank you, thank you.